Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, conics and in particular the ellipse. Uh, and what do we know about ellipses? Well, basically they're ovals, I guess. Uh, you can see here I've, uh, I've mentioned a few things. Uh, you can think of them like uh, some sort of uh, squashed circles or circles with a different aspect ratio. I guess you could think of them like this. But uh, normally um, uh, we look at the equation centered on the uh, origin which is this one x squared on a squared plus y squared on b squared equals one um, we uh, can obviously change the origin to hk and then that would be x minus h all squared on a squared plus y minus k all squared on b squared equals one that would be the ellipse with center hk we are normally also assuming that a is actually bigger than b there's a you can see here a couple of ways to represent the um, ellipse uh, there's a cartesian and a uh, let's have a look let's see if we can get the the Cartesian one, okay, which is uh, this one here. Okay, this is the Cartesian one, uh, and uh, we can actually just go down and have a quick look at the parametric one down here. So that would be the parametric representation of the ellipse x is equal to a cos theta and y is equal to b uh, sine theta. Now, uh, a few things about this if, if we're actually uh, ellipses are usually, I'll just see if I can uh, spin this around for us. Let's see if we can spin it around. Um, okay, here we go. You can see here, depending on whether A is bigger than B or uh, B is bigger than A, we get a different sort of shape on our ellipse. Okay, we can sort of... Uh, but normally uh, we have A is bigger than B and the ellipse is looking like a, a football, I guess you could say. Okay. Now, um, the eccentricity... Um, of uh, an ellipse uh, is in fact always between zero and one. A circle has actually um, uh, eccentricity of zero and a parabola has eccentricity of one. Uh, and if you may have watched the other video on uh, these conic sections, I'm going to uh, show you a few other things in a little while as well. But uh, this is actually how we derive, um, if you like, the um, yeah, the equations of the focuses and the directrices. Uh, we just use what's called internal and external um, division, okay, and we set up some equations and we can actually show where the focus and directrices are. Now, um, the you can see here eccentricity is in fact a ratio, uh, it's if you can think of it like a, a measure of the deviation from circular, I guess. Um, okay, um, yeah, the bigger the number for the eccentricity, the more uh, I guess the deviation from the circle, or if you like, the the stranger the circle is, or the flatter, or if you like, the more football shaped the circle becomes. Uh, and as you go past one, you get into the hyperbolas and it goes completely crazy. Okay, let's actually have a look at um, some of these. Okay, we're now looking at a, a GeoGebra file. You can see I've actually set up, um, uh, well, I can actually change the eccentricity. You can see here I'm just changing the eccentricity. You can see that the dotted lines are in fact the directrices. Okay, um, we, we can actually um, take the point and have a quick look here. Now, I've got actually um, the lengths of P to S and F, the foci, are in fact G and H. And if you can see here, on the G minus H is in fact changing quite dramatically. Uh, over here, if you have a look at the... Um, uh, over, over here, you can see here G minus H would in fact change quite dramatically if I start moving this okay but G plus H is in fact stable at 4.6 at the moment okay uh, this is obviously one of the properties of um, ellipses uh, some of the focal lengths uh, is constant up to that particular point okay all right so uh, let's actually start uh, changing the I can change the a uh, now if I can you can see here what's happening now if I actually change the a let's actually change the eccentricity as well Let's actually turn it to, well more circular. So if I, what happens when a circle? Okay, we can see here the the directrices are heading off to infinity, and at e is equal to zero, it's perfectly circular. Okay, and as I bring, you can see here now the. Uh, okay, it's changing the eccentricity to about 0.7. You can see here now that the the directrices are in fact uh, approaching the foci, uh, and um, I can see here if you can change the now. Okay, as you can just see, I'm just shrinking and changing it. But let's actually change the eccentricity to greater than one. Okay, here we are. And pull the point up and have a look and just have a quick look. I'll just move the point. 
and you can see here, okay, um, the G plus H, okay, is changing, okay, but, okay, G minus H, okay, is in fact, okay, the same. So the difference in the focal lengths is a constant here for the hyperbolas. We are going to be looking at these next, the hyperbolas, but at the moment we are actually concentrating uh, on the ellipses. Okay, and let's, let's drop the ellipse eccentricity back. Oops, going the wrong way. Uh, down to here. Okay. Okay. Well, let's actually uh, have a look at how we find the eccentricity. Okay. Well, how do I find e, the eccentricity? Well, I need a, a definition. I can guess you could say I can. I need. Uh, we need this thing here. Oops. No, no, we don't want uh, that. We don't want to move it. I just want to actually uh, have a look. Ooh. <laughs> Ah, yes, there we are, a bit strange. But we need this particular uh, ratio, PS equals EPM. Uh, we square both sides. We set up the distance formula, as you can see here. Squaring both sides. I'll see if I can make that a bit bigger. Um, it's a bit tricky to make a bit bigger. Let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. Oh, okay. Because I want to... Okay, all right. But we square both sides, basically. And um, I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so we square both sides and we uh, basically then divide by, uh, if you like here, a squared bracket 1 minus e squared, that, that is actually equal to b squared to set up the equation for the ellipse, and then we have an expression for e. So we can actually find e, the eccentricity, fairly easily, um, with, uh, well, we know the a's and the b's. And um, you can see here, um, we'll do a quick example in a second. Uh, e is equal to the square root of 1 minus b squared on a squared. Now, this has to always, as you know, lie in the range between 0 and 1. Okay. All right. So here we have a few examples. Um, uh, x squared on 81 plus y squared on 49 equals 1, or if you like, x squared on 9 squared plus y squared on 7 squared equals 1. Then I switch them around a bit. x squared on 7 squared plus y squared on 9 squared is 1. And uh, you can see here the eccentricity is obviously the same. It's just that the orientation has uh, been changed. Okay, you can see the foci are now plus or minus 4 root 2, 0, whereas in the other one it's 0 plus or minus 4 root 2. Obviously they are on the y-axis, and the first ones are on the x-axis. And you can see the directrices are x is equal to something, in this case plus or minus 81 root 2 on 8. And then uh, for the example 2, they obviously switch to y is equal to uh, uh, plus or minus uh, 81 root 2 on 8. Okay. All right. Now, how do we find equations of tangents and normals? Um, well, this is fairly involved. Uh, we need to basically differentiate the uh, ellipse. Uh, implicit differentiation, I think, is the easiest way to go. Get an expression for dy dx, uh, and then put in, uh, if you like, x1, y1, <coughs> or if you want the parametric one, uh, a cos theta and b sin theta. Okay, well, let's have a quick, a closer look at this. Um, okay, here we are. Okay, this is the Cartesian uh, gradient, which is, uh, if you like, just putting in x1 and y1 for the x and y. So it's minus x1 b squared on y1 a squared. And uh, if you just have a quick look below, obviously the uh, normal is the negative reciprocal. If you go across to the parameter or parametric gradient, you can see here it is actually just uh, you know substituting for x and y, a cos theta and b sine theta, and you can see here that the gradient for the parametric form is minus b cos theta on a sine theta, and obviously the, if you look down here, you can see okay the normal's gradient is again the negative reciprocal, not too bad. Now we have to start using these. Um, to get equations of tangents and normals and all sorts of things. So um, let's have a quick look. Okay, we want uh, Cartesian equations. Uh, you can see here we we need to put the gradient in, multiply both sides by y1 a squared, divide by a squared b squared, and eventually we'll get this um, quite important. Uh, let me just see if I can, uh, here we are. 
this is, these are quite important, these formulas here. I've got them in boxes now. Okay, so this is the tangent, uh, okay, which is x, x1 on a squared plus y, y1 on b squared equals 1. That's the Cartesian tangent to the ellipse, and uh, obviously the normal. Okay, you have to go through a bit of working, but uh, you can see here it says x a squared or a squared x on x1 minus b squared y on y1 equals a squared minus b squared. Okay, so that is uh, okay, the equation, or if you like, the Cartesian equation of the normal to the ellipse at that particular point, p, x1, y1. Okay, now the parametric ones, okay, you uh, still do a similar sort of thing. You have to uh, put in the parametric gradient and the parametric point to try and simplify. You can see you divide by a, b, use the fact that sine squared plus cos squared is 1, and eventually you'll get uh, over here. Okay, you get the what's called the parametric tangents equation x cos theta on a plus y sine theta on b equals 1. And uh, okay, uh, doing a bit more work, uh, you get the parametric normal. Okay, x or ax on cos theta plus, or sorry, it's actually minus by on sine theta equals a squared minus b squared. Okay, that's the parametric normal to the ellipse now. Okay, and obviously it's at, at that point a cos theta b sine theta from the parametric point. Okay, these are the parametric equations. Okay, now um, the quarter contact. Okay, uh, the quarter contact is, uh, as you can imagine, uh, it's pretty tricky to derive uh, algebraically, but uh, most textbooks use this technique that we basically, uh, if you like, get uh, the equation of the tangent and uh, put um, the tangent at a and b and put uh, x naught or y naught which is the external point uh, where you're firing the tangents from so p is the external point uh, x zero y zero and you basically put the point in and then look at uh, what sort of equation would they both lie on and that's the, called the equation of the quarter contact we do this for uh, lots of the conics uh, this one down here so okay so this is the equation of the quarter contact. It looks a bit like the equation of the tangent actually. Uh, x naught x on a squared plus y naught y on b squared equals 1. Okay, so this is what's called the equation of the quarter contact. Okay, we're now going to have a quick look. I'll set up a GeoGebra uh, file just to have a look at this. Well, okay, here we have a GeoGebra file, GeoGebra file um, and uh, I'll just have a quick look here. This is, um, you can see here, my, I'm moving my point P around. This is the, and you can see the quarter contact is in red there. Okay, this is the quarter contact. Oops. Okay, we need to be external to the, uh, <laughs> and you can see as I approach it looks like a bit like a tangent, doesn't it, really? Okay, so um, here we have the equation, okay, the quarter contact equation, which is uh, up here, okay, uh, which is changing as I move the point, obviously. Now, um, if I actually, uh, I've got A and B here, uh, you can see here we can change this. And I've actually got the foci as well, there you can see the foci now uh, on the x-axis. And if I make B bigger than A, it goes onto the y-axis. And we still, I mean, we still obviously, the equations are quarter contact. We can move this anywhere we like, really. I'll move the point right across through the <laughs> ellipse there. Uh, but obviously, um, you can see here, it's. It's basically um, just a line which is basically formed by uh, points of contact of the tangents uh, coming from an external point P. Now, I just wanted to show you uh, one of the properties. With there's lots of properties of ellipses. Um, let's actually see if I can. I want actually a focal chord. Now, a focal chord, as you can see, is actually going through the, the focus. So let, yeah, let's have a look. Okay. Oh, there we go. A focal chord. Now, the, the directrix will be out here, roughly. It looks like about. Uh, 13. So if I actually move that um, point P up and down along that line, uh, you can actually see that um, that chord of contact is actually a focal chord. Now this is um, one of the properties of ellipses, that if I actually uh, am on the directrix, okay, um, and fire the um, tangents off, uh, the point of contact obviously forms a chord of contact, but it's actually a special one, it's a, called a focal chord. So the chord of contact becomes what's called a a focal chord when I'm actually uh, firing uh, these tangents from the directrix to the ellipse. Okay. All right. Um, 
Okay, well let's move on, and here we have uh, okay the parametric chord PQ, which is uh, a fair bit of trouble to actually derive. You need a fair bit of um, trig because you've got to use um, sums to products and products to sums. This is uh, fairly involved. I just did it quickly here to get show you what's called the equation of the, the par well. This is actually the parametric chord. PQ coming from the points P and Q, you can see here with the parameters theta and thi, they're obviously on the uh, ellipse. Okay, but this is actually quite a difficult equation to derive, uh, and you would need to revise your sum to differences and differences to sum as trig results. Okay, now this is uh, some of the geometric properties. Okay, um, you can see here uh, some of the focal lengths is constant, yeah, the tangent uh, equally inclined, the normals bisect angle, quarter, or just did number three, actually I showed you number three on the GeoGebra one about the quarter contact from a point on the directrix is actually a focal chord, and uh, for the tangent, okay, the part of the tangent between the um, point of contact and the directrix subtender right angle at the corresponding focus, this is a another property of the, uh, or a geometric property of the ellipses. I'm not going to prove these, uh, and you can see many textbooks actually go through the proofs of these. Uh, but just before we go, I just want to show you um, how you can actually draw an ellipse. Okay, well just to finish up, uh, I just wanted to show you, this, this is uh, um, basically the auxiliary circles method of uh, drawing um, an ellipse. So I have point here, if you have a quick look, I'm just moving D on the uh, outer or the major auxiliary circle. Now, some, uh, there are a few things about, you know, the semi-major and semi-minor axis. The, the major axis, obviously, is the longest one. Uh, the minor axis is the uh, smallest one, and the semi-major, obviously, is half the, the long one, half of A. Uh, well, what is it? Um, uh, a would be actually the length of the um, major axis, okay. In this case, we have A bigger than B, uh, okay. And uh, the whole length, obviously, is uh, what uh, two A, okay. Uh, so um, yes, and a, a quick way to draw these, obviously, is if you let x equal zero, uh, you'll get the where it cuts a y axis, which would be uh, plus or minus B. And if you let y equal 0, you get plus or minus a. So you can see that, in fact, the um, major axis is, in fact, 2a, and the uh, minor axis is length 2b. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and uh, bye for now.